Welcome guys, this is your faculty Ranganathan S. Pondala. Now, in today's discussion, I'm going to give, quickly give you an overview of certain topics of uh, modern Indian history where actually the coming of uh, certain Europeans, certain historians actually changed the perspective of modern Indian history and actually the path in which modern Indian history was going. Now, in our history, the coming of Vasco da Gama is considered one of the biggest changes. I mean, <coughs> Vasco ka ana ek tarikhe se bohut bada badlav tha. Hindustan ki itihas mein Portuguese jab Hindustan aaye the, actually they also came only as traders. Wo bhi traders ki tarah aaye the, but eventually they changed their perspective. They have changed what they wanted and after initial couple of struggles with the Zamorin, the king of um, um, Calicut, Vasco and Portuguese eventually were quite successful in making Portuguese one of the strongest European settlements in India as early as 1498. Now, in the year 1497, King Manuel I of Portugal actually appointed Vasco da Gama to command a voyage, basically an armada, a group of ships. And he gave Vasco an offer that any ship he desired, Vasco could take and discover a sea route to India. On the 18th of July 1497, Vasco set sail on the ship Sao Gabriel with the fleet of three ships named after the Archangels Gabriel, Raphael and Michael. So, Sao Gabriel, Sao Raphael and Sao Michael, 170 people, they left Lisbon in search of India. In fact, these, most of these people who set sail with Vasco da Gama were actually not um, sailor men themselves. They were basically a mix of carpenters, blacksmiths, rope makers and um, multiple skilled workers. The initial voyage of Vasco da Gama was on the way of uh, Cape of Good Hope. In fact, initially he came all the way till the end of Africa. The Cape of Good Hope. In those days it used to be called Cape of Good Hope because that Cape was known for what, what we today call Cape Town. Cape Town mein bhoat sara storm hote the. There used to be a lot of storms. Tufan hamesha chalta. There used to be always Tufans etc. So Cape of Good Hope was known to be, um, you can say, a sort of expression of relief, 1497-99 Cape of Good Hope and Vasco became the first European group, Vasco and his people became the first European group to set their settlement, set their sails in Africa, connecting Indian and Atlantic routes. Also this marked the beginning of multiculturalism because ye pehli bar blacks, Africans were getting in direct connect with Europeans. So, big change was happening. Gama's exploration gave Portuguese a unique strategic advantage. The first man advantage. There were three G's which Vasco was looking for. Gold, glory and God. The three G which gave uh, Portuguese a unique advantage over all other Europeans. Uh, it gave them um, access to old routes that went through Mediterranean and Arab world. And Always remember, by the time of 13th century, the old Arab routes, old Middle Eastern routes were completely under the control of the Mediterranean, uh, the Arab traders. Ottoman Turks, Istanbul, le chuke the. Ab ye Istanbul le ke Europeans ko aane wale nahi the Hindustan mein. Vasco had the first Gower advantage and also ensured that Portuguese had a virtual unopposed monopoly on the precious Indian spice trade, making them the undisputed rich people, undisputed lords of trade in Europe, quite for some time. In fact, in 16th century, pepper was more uh, valuable than gold. No wonder Europeans used to call it black gold. It was on 20th of May, 1498, in uh, Kapar, Vasco Gama landed. Vasco landed near Calicut. Now, uniquenesses 
when Gama sighted the coast of South Africa on Christmas Day, he just I named the point of landing uh, landing as Natalis. See, um, Natalis basically Natal basically means um, Christmas in Portuguese, and eventually he called this region as Natal region. Even today in South Africa, the province in which Cape Town and South important province of South Africa is Natal province. बाद में आप लोगों को शायद याद होगा इवन मोहनदास करमचंद गांधीज पॉलिटिकल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन साउथ अफ्रीका वॉज कॉल्ड नटाल इंडियन कांग्रेस द रूट वर्ड फॉर नटाल नटाल बेसिकली मींस क्रिसमस इन पोर्चुगीज वास्को नेम्ड इट नटाल फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इट इज इंटरेस्टिंग टू नोट दैट इंडियन लैंग्वेजेस लाइक हिंदी एंड मराठी आल्सो यूज द वर्ड नटाल फॉर क्रिसमस इवन टुडे आज भी हिंदी में नटाल कहते हैं सो यू कैन सी द मैप देयर वास्को वेंट ऑल द वे फ्रॉम लिस्बन Via the South Atlantic Guy to Saint Helens Bay, Mosul Bay, Natal, Safala, Primorias, Mozambique, Mombasa, Malindi, and from here, Ab Ib Abdul Majid or Ibdul Majid guided Vasco towards Calicut. The fleet arrived in Kapad in Calicut in the Malabar coast, twentieth of May, fourteen ninety eight. The ruler of Calicut in those days was Samundran or Zamorin, who was uh, staying at his second capital, Ponani. He returned to Calicut on returning the hearing the news of Vasco arriving, a uh, foreign fleet's arrival. In fact, you know Vasco da Gama. As soon as he came, he gifted six hands, four branches of corals, four cloaks of scarlet cloth, twelve. Almazares, a box of seven brass vessels, a chest of sugar, two barrels of oil, a cask of honey. The funny part is, so many gifts Vasco gave to Zamorin and thought he would impress Zamorin. Zamorin did not get impressed. See, Zamorin was most interested in gold, silver. Sona chahiye tha isko. And you know there is one of the recent excavations, the recent studies about Vasco da Gama revealed this trivia. Actually. um many of the records claim that portuguese commander vasco impersonated himself as a muslim in actual in mozambique in africa mozambique he actually impersonated himself as a muslim he did not tell people that he was a christian it was here that he came in contact with ibn majid an arab navigator some people say he was a gujarati merchant whose knowledge of the monsoon winds guided the expedition all the way to calicut on the southwest coast of india zamorin was not impressed completely with vasco's gifts keeping in mind his long arduous journey he even granted portuguese permission to trade in spices and local calico also called calicos eventually calicos became india's most expensive and most valuable export vasco's expedition was successful beyond all reasonable expectations in reality because he made a lot of money in fact See, he got trade permissions, but what want, what Vasco Vasco wanted was monopoly, which obviously was not going to come because Arab traders had monopoly over trade in Zamorin's territory. But yet, when Vasco went back, his first launched his first campaign, when they went back, he made a profit sixty times the cost of his travel, sixty times the cost of expense. Now, when somebody like Vasco goes back, don't you think others in Europe will be quite impressed with him? Vasco was just celebrated for opening a direct sea route to Asia. Eventually, consistently, many follow-ups happened. Like, for example, the famous follow-up in 1500 by Pedro Alvarez Cabral. Cabral followed exactly Vasco's path. On the way, he ended up finding out Brazil. He would eventually cast anchor in September 1500. And uh, lay his foot at Calicut. Here, Zamorin welcomed Cabral. I mean, Zamorin did give some welcome to Cabral, and Cabral had a good amount of, uh, let's say, celebration. Now, eventually, when Cabral came, you must understand Cabral was still a Portuguese, and as I said before, the Arabs had very strong domination with the Indian trade. So, Arabs and Cabral fought with each other. Cabral retaliated by bombarding the city and then by placing the destroyed rival vessels, actually capturing them and destroying them. He eventually went to Kochi, very south from Calicut, where he was 
nicely received, even permitted to trade for precious spices. And then he loaded six remaining ships. In fact, <coughs> because Zamorin was still under the Arab influence, the king of Kochi actually welcomed Kepar. Eventually, Vasco took command of the 4th Indian Armada, scheduled to set out in 1502. And uh, this, Vasco's, this was second trip of Vasco and fourth trip of the Portuguese. Heavily armed fleet left Lisbon in 1502. The idea was to force the Zamorin to submit to Portuguese and make him surrender. Once Vasco reached the coast of Kerala, he joined hands with another king called Kananur. Kananur had very bad relations with Zamorin. Already Cochin was pro-Portuguese. Kananur was anti-Travancore, so um, anti-Zamorin, so became friend of Portuguese. Eventually, Zamorin was attacked. Dagama bombarded the port and seized and massacred the hostages. Portuguese then eventually went to Cochin, with whose ruler they formed an alliance. And eventually Portuguese base was very strong. The beauty was the um, on the Kerala coast, in the north there were Portuguese, in the south there were Portuguese, in the center was Zamorin. Zamorin could not face this. Vasco went back with the loot after attacking Zamorin, defeating him and destroying the state of Calicut. And on his arrival back, he went with 20 of gold. Eventually, he gave 1500 gold matkas, gold sort of gold, uh, you can say, tributes to the Portuguese king. The king, <coughs> this gold was used by Portuguese king Manuel to create Belém Monstrance. You can see the image there in the background. This Belém Monstrance is one of the most widely, most beautiful memory or memorial for the success of Portuguese in the God, Glory and Gold campaign of India. Now in that, in that image if you see, in this lower part, there are the 12 apostles kneeling at the center. Widely considered Portugal's most aesthetic, most popular, emblematic goldsmith work. Vasco finally came in a third voyage in 1524 with a fleet of 14 ships. Vasco took as his flagship the famous large Carac, large ship Santa Catarina de Monte Sinai on her last journey of India. Vasco came here. Vasco started his journey along with his two sons, Estevao and Paulo. It was a very difficult journey. Few ships were lost. Finally, Vasco arrived in September. 24. See, before Vasco could actually establish himself, he was now coming in third voyage, he was now coming into India where there was a proper established Portuguese state. But Vasco had bad luck. He contracted malaria. Eventually, he died in the city of Cochin on Christmas Eve 1524. September 1524, he came. October, November, December 24th, he died. In fact, in fact, St. Francis Church was in near Fort Kochi was the original resting place of Vasco da Gama. Original burial ground of Vasco da Gama. But eventually, Vasco's body was taken back. In, in 1880, Vasco, Vasco da Gama's body was taken back to Portugal. When we see the legacy of Vasco da Gama, Portugal's longest bridge even today is named after Vasco. See, in Portuguese history, Vasco remains one of the most popular guys. And also, in the port city of Vasco da Gama in Goa, he is named after him. And even a crater of moon is named after Vasco da Gama. There are three football clubs in Brazil. And also Vasco club in Goa. Presently, there exists a church which is dedicated to Vasco da Gama called the Vasco da Gama Church, mainly a suburb of Vasco in Cape Town. Mainly 
to honor them. So one man who achieved so much that eventually he became the most successful legacy of India, of Portuguese India, of Portuguese history in India. That's it in the session today, guys. That's a very small trivia about Vasco. He came in three trips. The first trip was economically profitable. The second trip was politically, militarily successful because he was able to defeat the Portuguese uh, occupation, the Zamorin's arrogance. And in the third trip, he could not really achieve much because he died. Thank you. This is do subscribe to this channel, follow this channel, more fantastic videos of uh, modern India, ancient India, medieval India and also for history optional will be uploaded on this channel. Thank you. Click on the subscribe button. Bye-bye.